Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video. And today we're doing something a little bit different because I wanna talk about lenses, specifically lens design and the path manufacturers have chosen because with Nikon's latest 35 millimeter F1.2 release, it's become clear the path Nikon has chosen regarding their lens design and future. And it's also become clear now what Canon has chosen and what Sony has chosen. And I wanna talk about that today. If you're new to the channel, I am a portrait photographer based out of San Antonio, Texas, and I like reviewing cameras. As a matter of fact, I love gear, I love cameras, and I think all manufacturers are phenomenal, and we are lucky to be alive right now because you can't go wrong with Canon, Nikon, or Sony, but it's become pretty clear that each brand has chosen a different path. What do I mean by that? Well, Nikon just announced their 35 millimeter F1.2, and it is a huge lens. It is a bazooka of a lens, and it actually matches their 50 millimeter F1.2, which also happens to be the biggest 50 millimeter 1.2 in the market. But why is that? Why are Nikon's lenses so massive? Well, Nikon has chosen a path with their lens design. They've chosen to optically correct all the flaws. What I mean by that is they're designing their lenses to be optically perfect with no digital assistance, which means in return, you have pretty large lenses because you have to fit autofocusing motors, you have to fit all the technology and be optically perfect. Well, what is the opposite of what Nikon is doing? That's actually going to be Canon. Canon has released their new line of lenses. There are 35, 24, 50, uh, even the new 70 to 200. I think they actually started with a 24 to 105 f2.8 of lenses that are optically flawed. They're actually optically terrible. These lenses cannot be used without digital corrections in post or in camera corrections for JPEGs. And what I mean by that is all these lenses have massive distortion, massive vignetting, and Canon has chosen to create optically imperfect lenses and correct the imperfections later on in your uh, Lightroom or whatever kind of software you use to edit your photos. And they've chosen this because they're able to get their lenses to be smaller and lighter. Not necessarily cheaper, but smaller and lighter. We'll get to how I feel about that in a second. And then you have Sony. And I think Sony's actually doing a little bit of both. With their G Master lenses, for the most part, they're pretty optically perfect. They're not the largest, they're not the smallest, they're kind of in the middle. But Sony has chosen to do digital corrections with their cheaper lenses. So for example, last year, they released their 24 to 50, and I think 16 to 24 Zoom G lenses. And these lenses are optically imperfect, they're actually pretty terrible, and you need to have digital corrections turned on or fix it later in post to fix those imperfections. But what they did is they released a cheaper line of lenses, a small compact line of lenses that require digital corrections. And from the most part, it looks like Sony is doing this with their G line and their cheaper lenses and not necessarily their G master line. So Sony kind of falls in the middle of this lens design choice. And then you have your third party manufacturers like Sigma, uh, Viltrox, these companies don't have the luxury to design uh, software corrections because they're not making the camera like Canon, uh, Nikon, and Sony. So you actually have to optically design their lenses to be perfect. And that's why Sigma lenses are on the larger side because they don't have the luxury to fix it later. Bill Trock has actually quite impressed me because their 16 millimeter F1.8 lens is one of the best wide angle lenses I've ever used and it's optically perfect. There is no digital corrections needed for that lens to have no distortion, and that's pretty impressive. So, we now know the direction these three different manufacturers are going, and us as photographers and as consumers have to decide what path we wanna take. And look, the reality is there isn't a wrong path because you could be in the camp, and I'm actually in this camp, that hates digital corrections, I hate spending $2,000 on a lens that's optically imperfect that needs to be fixed via software. But I also understand that the final result is what matters. And with digital corrections and with all that magic, the final result is still gonna be awesome. So does it really matter? 
I think for me, it's more of a principle thing. If I'm paying $2,000, I want that lens to be optically designed the right way, not with shortcuts. So again, at the end of the day, the final results, what matters, does it really matter if you have digital corrections or not? For me, I like Sony's approach. I think Sony's kind of striking that perfect balance in the middle, having the digital corrections for their cheaper line, but for their G Master line, kind of not necessarily relying on digital corrections as much and doing it more with an optical design. I have to commend Nikon for what they're doing. I think what they're doing is special, making cool lenses like the 35 millimeter F 1.2, regardless of the size, giving us the option to say, hey, here's a special lens. It's optically perfect. It's expensive, but if you want it, have at it. And they also provide cheaper, smaller lenses. So I like what Nikon is doing as well. I honestly, like I said, it bothers me when you're spending so much money on a lens and it's not optically designed the right way and it's designed with shortcuts in mind. And that's why I really can't get behind Canon's approach where they're really leaning into these digital corrections. But we now know the path each company is choosing and the direction each company is choosing. So like I mentioned before, it's up to us to decide what we wanna choose, what we wanna shoot with, and who we wanna support. So let me ask you guys, in the comments down below, let me know, does it matter if it's digitally corrected afterwards? Does it bother you? Which brand are you choosing and why? Let's have a discussion down below. Uh, again, I think the power of choice is awesome. We get to choose uh, which path we wanna take and support whatever brand we wanna support. And at the end of the day, we're gonna get some incredible results because all this hardware, all these cameras, Everything we have now is truly above and beyond of what we need and really enables us to tell a story with these tools. But guys, let's have a discussion down below. Which path are you gonna choose? Which brand do you wanna support? And what's your take on all this? If you're new to the channel, please smash the subscribe button. It really helps out. If you like videos like this, where it's more of a discussion on the industry and brands and what's going on, also let me know down in the comments below so I can make more videos like this. And as always, guys, I will see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Peace.